He's right there in Pasadena, Maryland. His church is awesome. And he's going to be talking, leading from victory. <laughs> Amen. Bless you. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Dave. That was awesome. Is this yours? Yeah, you, you don't want to be without your rock. Got stoned. You can come and preach at our church anytime, Dave. Uh, I'd like to pick up where he left off, and if you would, uh, we'll, I wrote this in my Thompson Chain Reference Bible in July of 1977, and it's been with me ever since. <clears throat> and uh, so I'd like to begin and close with this declaration. You've probably heard it. I think I got it from T.L. Osborne's Healing the Sick book. can't remember exactly. But it goes like this, and I want you to say it after me. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. Now that's the truth. That's the truth. And you know, we talk about confession, we talk about declaration, and People argue about it, all kinds, but the fact of the matter is you cannot go wrong when you are saying what God's saying. In fact, the very word, you know, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of your confession. The word confession uh, in the New Testament Greek is homologeo, which means to say the same thing as. To, to say that homo means same, logo comes from logos word, speak the same word. And it's in reference to sin, calling sin what it is, not messing around there. You know, if you're in idolatry, you call it what it is. If you're in envy or strife or slander, how many know, uh, I think Graham Cook says that uh, when you meet an accusation with an accusation, you just put yourself on the wrong team. You just entered into the, the slanderer of the brethren. So that needs to be confessed. But then on the kingdom side of it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Go with me to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Just want to look at a few verses of Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Timothy uh, had some problems with timidity, fear. Verse 7, <clears throat> for God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and discipline. This is the NAS, sound mind. The, the, the word means, uh, uh, the, the Greek word means safe thinking. <laughs> safe thinking. That means you have clarity when there's craziness going around you. You have, you have crazy, craziness going around you, but you have clarity and you have self-control and you have disciplined thoughts. How many know that just doesn't happen? You have, to, you have to be intentional with that. You have to be purposeful. And that's what Paul's telling him. He, Paul's telling him who he really is. He's giving him the truth. God didn't give you a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and of love and a sound mind. He said, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord and of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. And here's, here's what I want to bring out here. Who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, 
which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity or before the foundation of the world. What a reality. The fact of the matter is, these two Davids here were called before the foundation of the world and equipped. Now, of course, there's no works involved with that. We're not even around. And the great thing is, the, the grace that's in the calling enables us to fulfill the calling. So you see how there's rest in that. There's, so here's David on this, with the sheep practicing, you know, I don't know what he lined up, but he had a sling and he had a stone to, after he was hurling, of course, you know, he'd stretch a little bit and do a little more sling work. But, and in between, just for kicks, go out and kill a lion and a bear. I don't know. You know, that, David's an enigma. It's hard to figure him out. But, he, but he, he had a word from Samuel and felt, probably should do this at our ordination services. We should just take a whole bottle of oil and just pour it on, prophesy. But here's David. He had a word from God about his future, his destiny. Now that word came through Samuel, but in reality it was before the foundation of the world. Samuel was the vessel to bring it forth. David had this word knowing he was going to meet the big guy. So he had a word from God concerning Goliath. So David turns into this king warrior. And he starts mentoring guys. In Benaiah, uh, <clears throat> this morning, I uh, can't remember who, this morning we were in, yeah, we were, we were in uh, uh, 2 Samuel 23. And right down about verse 20, it said, Benaiah killed two Moabites. And as he was heading back to Ziglag, he jumped in the pit to kill a lion on a snowy day. It's like, whoa. So David, who was on the side of the hill tending sheep, turns into this mentor warrior guy. David's 30. You know, he just took a bunch of guys like us and turned them into people who want to jump in the pit with a lion and kill them <laughs> on a snowy day. It's just funny how it just throws it in. And I'm from Buffalo. Now, Buffalo just got smacked. People wonder why I hate snow. That's why I hate snow. I grew up in that. And we need to keep them in prayer, really, because people's roofs are caving in. It's, it, it's gotten crazy serious there. Twelve people have died. Uh, one of the folks in our church, their relative, their brother-in-law, was snowblowing and fell, hit his head and died. So it's, it's really crazy. But um, when, when, you, when you look at the attitude of the warriors and you think about leading from victory, of course we're leading from victory because we've been transferred out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. It's all past tense. I remember early in my <clears throat> Christian uh, walk, I grew up in church, but didn't, I wasn't born again, and I didn't know anything about my identity in Christ. In fact, I heard about the Lord in a bar. I was watching the Buffalo Braves in uh, 1974, just watching him play basketball. I was on about my eighth or ninth beer. And a, and a guy who was laid off, we, we were, got laid off from the oil crunch on, from uh, the South Buffalo Railroad. He came up to me. I'm just watching Bob McAdoo just like slam some 25-footers from the top of the key. And he said, Greg, have you ever been born again? I said, Mike, do you want a shot in a beer or something? What's up with you? <laughs> you know, I, you, some of you guys came out of the bar scene. I mean, you, you, you know, you, you're, Jesus? 
really? You know, it just didn't mix. <clears throat> and I could tell he was nervous. But he said, my wife and I, we, we were uh, divorced. We got remarried. And I made some stupid jokes about that that I won't repeat. But I went home. I got home at 2 o'clock in the morning. I had my, still had my, I used to take the beer with me. If I wasn't done with the beer, I just used to bring it with me. Set it on my dresser. Went out and sat in the kitchen. Smoked Marlboros till 6 in the morning. But I started talking to God. I said, God, if you can help him, you can help me. And uh, I called my mother at 6 in the morning. This is weird. This is so weird, this story. And uh, we had eight children in our family. My dad had just had a nervous breakdown. He uh, was bipolar and had a serious manic attack, and it was, it was dreadful. And I know what my mother was thinking. She's thinking, oh, my gosh, here's my son <laughs> suddenly turning into a Jesus freak. That's what she called me, um, asking if we can get the family. I said, well, we need to, get to go to 12 o'clock mass. I was, we were raised Roman Catholic. We're going to go to 12 o'clock mass. We're going to come back to my house, and we're going to have brunch. Oh, really? Okay. And, and they all went. It was funny. They all, I got everybody to church. It was sort of weird. And um, I, did, I couldn't explain the gospel. I just knew God was real. And my paradigm, my plumb line was mass. So I did that for three weeks. Finally went to a home Bible study. Clearly heard the gospel. Started with the, the sin in the garden all the way to the Roman road. Accepting Christ. Got saved. And things began to change because Peggy and I had been separated three times in five years of marriage. I didn't know up from down. And uh, God intervened. And I, I found out. Uh, Jerry Savelle came to uh, Buffalo in 1976, uh, February 76. The first time I heard about blood covenant, righteousness, consciousness, being complete in Christ. It just rubbed Three meetings a day for a week transformed. Yeah, I mean, we were like, Russ Taff was his worship leader. <laughs> there was 15 people the first meeting. Jerry Savelle said, I'm t don't be moved by the number of people here. I'm telling you, by Friday, this is going to be packed out. And I'm thinking, this poor guy doesn't even know what he's doing, man. This is, I felt bad. I came back because I felt bad no one was showing up. But by Friday, man, it was packed out. And the word was going forth. And I found out that over 130 times in the epistles, it mentions in him, in Christ, in whom. And all these in him realities, these new creation realities, show us who we really are. And so, of course, we're going to lead from victory. Otherwise, we're not going to lead. You're, really, you're just going to be in the way. You want to be of the way, not in the way, right? That's a, you don't want to be in the way. And if religion will make you trip and fall and be in the way and impede people's progress in growing in Christ. Because you can have a form of godliness, but when you deny the power thereof, and the power is in the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Make no mistake about that. It is with the endowment of power from on high that we are able to live out what is going on on the inside. And so here David leading these guys, his mighty men, his mighty warriors, and Benaiah jumps in the pit because he's, he, he's thinking if that lion gets out of the pit, he can go into the village. And a warrior, one of the marquees of a warrior, they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives even unto death. There it is. Because once you've been crucified and raised in Christ and you are ministering out of rest and your identity is in him, you are no longer a man pleaser. You are no longer afraid of going into the fray because you know in whom you have believed and you are persuaded. Isn't, isn't that what happened with Abraham? He became fully persuaded. You know what's going on with the revival culture? with the culture of honor and grace and authority and identity, people are becoming fully persuaded. He hoped against hope. He considered his own body dead and the deadness of Sarah's womb 
but he believed God. He became fully persuaded, catch this, giving glory to God. As he was giving glory to God, he knew that God, who calls the things that are not as though they are, he entered into that by the gift of faith that God gave him, the father of our faith, Abraham. And he gave honor and glory to God. And he became fully persuaded. And that's what happens with the renewed mind. Uh, go back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> Because our battle is not against flesh and blood, as, as uh, our brother David just told us. It really isn't. The biggest obstacle that you and I have is our own mind. And what I'm talking about, it's not the power of positive thinking. It's not an Anthony Robbins thing, although it's better to think positive than negative for sure. But... Um, this is the spiritual law. This is the law of the spirit of life which is over, transcends, and is greater than the law of sin and death. <laughs> and we're, we're becoming believing believers. We're becoming fully persuaded. So, of course, we're going to lead from victory. Because that's who we are. I am who God says I am. And boy, it's so good to be in this kind of atmosphere because worship, you get hungry people together worshiping God, it totally clears the atmosphere. It, it really, truly, we, heaven and earth meet. The presence of God is, is, is manifested in such a way that it clears out all the negativity that's probably much greater than we realize or, or, or understand. And so the heart is ready. It's, it's an environment. Uh, Bill Johnson calls it, you know, it's like the greenhouse uh, principle. You know, you, in Buffalo right now with, uh, they got 85 inches of snow in 24 hours. That's crazy. Even for Buffalo, it's crazy. But even in the midst of Buffalo, there's the botanical gardens. Even, at, even in the midst of all that crazy snow and everything, the inside, if you walk in the botanical gardens, you're just, Janice would be in heaven. Like, woo -hoo. In case you don't know, Janice is a garden goddess. Just so you know, she can help your plants out. So, in the midst of, of, of very bad weather, in the greenhouse, everything's growing. Worship provides that greenhouse for our inner man and for the soul to receive. So we're getting soaked here. This is, like a, this is like a mega dose of heaven. It's a mega dose of revelation that breaks strongholds. And let me get to my text. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. This is out of the NAS. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. The fortresses come from the lies, the false images. It's not good, good self-image versus bad self-image. It's true image versus false image. And Pastor David and others have mentioned the culture gives us these false images of what a man is or isn't. You know, when you look at some of the sitcoms, you know, I can't even watch the commercials on the sitcoms. It's, I, just, I just start screaming at the TV, get a little crazy about it. It just, it just irritates me because the man is this buffoon who doesn't, he doesn't, well, I don't even want to go, don't even want to go. <laughs> These fortresses are being destroyed by truth. The entrance of his word brings forth light. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when we declare the word of God and we receive the word of God, it begin, and especially in an atmosphere of worship, out of intimacy, out of relationship, religious form will not do it. Just mental rote with the scriptures will not do it. But when we receive by faith the word of God and we begin to declare that's who I am, 
It destroys the, these speculations, these fortresses, these false images that keep people in bondage. And he said, we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. When, when we begin to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, we begin to destroy the speculations. The, the Greek word speculations here means considerations and intentions. Considerations and intentions. So it begins to bring a, an integrity to the soul where the, where the soul and spirit now are lined up. Because the soul and spirit make up your heart. We can't be of a divided heart. We have to be, have singleness of heart. And so your inner man, and we like to say, you know, it goes from the head to the heart. But really, I think it goes from the spirit to the soul. It goes from the heart to the mind in that respect. Because the truth, your inner man, your spirit man has no problem with this. It's between the ears. It's the lies. You know, divorce, child abuse, rape, all of that fractures the soul. It fractures the soul. And so the identity of that person is just, they're just reeling in it. They, they, have, no, they have no way to combat that save for the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we come in. Our mission statement. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's anointed me to bring deliverance to the captives. He's commissioned me. I mean, we have, we have the anointing of Jesus on us. Jesus breathed on the disciples. And he said, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. He's called us by name. He's given us his anointing. He's given us his word. Of course we lead from victory because we're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're, we're in him. He's in us. Two-thirds of the Godhead right at the second are praying for us. Yeah, Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us according to the will of God. And the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. He's our intercessor. He's our standby. He's our comforter. He's our all in all. That's us. That's who we are. Leading from victory? I should say so. Let's stand. There's no penalty for finishing early, is there? Okay. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get penalized. I am a Bills fan. I am a Bills fan, I got to tell you. It has worked. No, it has worked great sanctification in me. <laughs> I have learned how to persevere through the storm. <laughs> I've learned how to be loyal with a crummy football team for a long time. So it teaches you loyalty. You know, you're not going to be, I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon. I'm going to be loyal. I've been a fan since 1960. I'm not changing now. That's fair, okay. And I, and I do have a black belt in Taekwondo, so if you mock them out, I'm going to drop you, right? No, I'm just kidding. I really don't. I'm much more loving, but I do have a rock. <laughs> I want to do this a little different. Um, I, want to, I want you to take somebody... One-on-one, -on -one, if you can just look at somebody. Yeah, look at somebody. And you take turns telling them this. You are who God says you are. You have what God says you have. And you can do what God says you can do. All right, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these great men, Lord. I thank you for these warriors, these worshipers, these, these desires of truth. I thank you, Father, that they will fulfill your divine destiny and purpose. I thank you for destroying vain imaginations and false images. I thank you, Father, for causing them to walk in the anointing that you've blessed them with, the anointing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for boldness. We thank you for courage. We thank you, Lord, that you have caused us to ride in the heavenly places with you because of what Jesus has done for us at the cross. 
We thank you, Lord. We do have resurrection life within us. And we bring heaven wherever we go. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment. Give us courage, Lord. Give us tenacity. Give us compassion. Give, give us sensitivity, Lord. But help us to bring heaven at every opportunity. And we ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank you.